Hello and welcome back to the channel. So uh, in this part we're going to talk about the basics of armour modelling and uh, the, some of the, the, the hurdles you can get through right at the start. So first off there's an array of different kits. This is just a few I've pulled from the stash here and you can see the different uh, types. You've got German, we've got um, interwar, uh, we've got World War One, we've got Russian amphibious tanks, all sorts. So um, where do we begin? Well Personally, if you're uh, very much a beginner, then I think you need to be starting with something like Tamiya. It's a great, uh, in fact, I would say exclusively Tamiya. If, you, if you're just building your first couple of armour models, I would just pick anything from the Tamiya catalogue. Now, the good thing with Tamiya is uh, they're extremely high quality, even if you go way back into the catalogue. Now these two here are actually uh, 70s mouldings, uh, so they've been around a long time. But they fit like a kit that would have just come out today. So you've got, they've always got that going for them. They're usually pretty simplistic and they're about building the model to a, you know, a high standard, a high finish. Not necessarily getting uh, worked up in trying to be completely accurate. So you tend to get rubber band tracks, which is the tracks are in, uh, well, like, let's have a look, that's what we're here for. So rubber band tracks are something that you'll see. Um, if you start looking on forums and stuff, people don't tend to like these because they're not great for, for pure accuracy. But you get the tracks in one run like this, and you bring them around, hence why they're called a rubber band, and then you, you, you sort of bend them around the wheels. Uh, you join them with a bit of heat or super glue, uh, melt some pins in there, and that's how you get them together. So that's one way of doing tracks. Uh, that's again one thing in um, going for Tamiya, is that they're actually quite a simple way of doing tracks if you're in the basics. Uh, you usually got two piece or single piece barrel, uh, so there's a bit of a seam to sort out there, but it's simple again, it's still out of plastic, you don't have to worry about metal, you don't have to worry about extras. You've usually got really nice decals and um, good paint schemes, good interests, and you can follow the whole of the Tamiya um, paint range and it should be relatively straightforward. Now, as you start to move forward, you might start seeing a few other things popping up. Now, there's another Tamiya kit. Oh, and here as well. But we'll get onto that one. That's there for a reason in a minute. So you might get onto something like this. So you've got Hobby Boss, which is one of the more modern uh, makers, manufacturers. But the trouble is, you'll start to see things start to come in here, um, which you might not be used to. So your tracks are on sprues. Instead of having the rubber band, you've got to cut all of these individual ones out, and we've got 4, 8, 12, 16, and then another 6 and 12. So we end up having 28 links per sprue. Each one of those has to be cut out, and you'll probably find you've got nearly 60 odd links per side. So um, before you know it, 86 links per side so we've got to put 86 links together and wrap them around so it's a little bit more complicated and it's going to take a bit more time and also you can see that the the hole and the uh, top it's a little bit more complicated it slots in there but it's not as easy Tam you know tamia wouldn't generally be so much like that uh, perhaps it could be but sometimes in these kits you'd actually need to build this up as well this would come as uh, one piece and two sides and then a top so it's just a little bit more complicated and we've also got the photo etch creeping in there as well, which is a bit trickier as well. So just things to think about. Uh, if you're an absolute beginner, it's probably better to stay away from some of these things straight off. Also, you've got other manufacturers that can look really, really good, appealing with the box art. So we've got this B-type uh, military omnibus, which is a brilliant, brilliant subject. Looks absolutely brilliant straight off the, um, off the box art. But mini art are an extremely well, they're an extremely good manufacturer but they do not leave anything out so as you flip through there's your sprues you've got all of this you've also got the photo etch creeping in you've got clear parts and then you've got how many pages you've got 84 steps there to build this that includes a full engine. You've got to put the chassis together. You've got to actually put all the parts as you go through, the leaf springs. You can't skip any of this. There's no shortcuts. Whether you want to show the engine or not, you've got to do it all. And it goes all the way through, as you can see. So again, certainly not for a beginner. 
that's going to be something that you build up to. You might need, you know, six months to a year under your belt before you can tackle something like that. And even then people struggle. And there's no problem with that. These things are difficult. This is another very colourful thing. So we've got this Ford uh, TFC armoured car, which was an interwar um, armoured car used by the Polish. And two sprues. Looks very simple. But this is a short run kit, which um, is short run technology. So it means that certain parts um, may not be as refined as some of your Tamiya stuff, although this one does actually look very good. You might find that there's some fit issues. You've got to build the whole thing up, so you've got to align all these sides. So again, something you need to build towards. And also, um, I, if I remember rightly, you don't get much in the way of instructions. No, they're on the back of the box. So, all a bit tricky. So again, something to avoid, I think. I wouldn't want any of these as your first five kits. Perhaps this Hobby Boss one could creep in, potentially towards the end. But I would think, if you were starting out, you may want to go uh, Tamiya all the way through your first sort of three to five kits, and then start branching out from there. Now, the reason I've got this Universal Carrier here is because there's another aspect of uh, armour modelling that's very easy to get carried away with, and that's the extras. This kit has not been built because I've just got lost in getting all of the extras for it. And now, it's too much of a daunting project to begin. However, uh, I do have plans afoot. So I've got a full etch set here, which re replaces all of the sheet metal parts with this very fine sheet metal that you then bend and um, apply. We've even got front fenders there, so we cut off the kit parts. Rear fenders, even. So we cut off the kit parts, and we add those on. Then you can add some battle damage. You get the, a separate sheet of instructions like that as well, you see? And it shows you in the red the bits you cut off, and, and on you go. You've got your basic kit in there, and I've also gone wild and bought a set of individual link tracks, which is, you know, absolutely... Well, could be class as insane. That's to re replace these rubber band tracks. So, uh, all things... <laughs> Just to bear in mind, and um, things that we will get to through this series as well, we will get to points when we start adding things like that in, um, showing you um, why it would be good to have those. Something else, when you're a beginner, a reason to avoid these sort of kits and getting carried away like this, is that it gets expensive. The base kit can be £15, £20. Pounds. You add a set of tracks, certainly if you start getting into the metal tracks, uh, you know, it can be another £20, more than the kit. You buy an etch set, it's another £10. You buy metal barrels for some tanks, and on it goes. It gets it's just rockets away with itself, and um, you get lost in the project. So it's something to bear in mind. And lastly, if we look at something like this um, T3485 here, from Trumpeter. Now this is when things can actually go in your favour. This is a relatively cheap kit around the £30 mark and what you start to notice is things creep in that we've been looking at um, adding in other uh, kits. So we've actually got the individual link tracks. We have a metal barrel added in here. It comes is the kit. We've even got the um, copper uh, wire as well for doing the tow cables and we've got a set of photo etch. So you start to think, well, wow, that's not too bad. And this would probably be uh, your entry point into adding something a little bit more um, detailed to a kit. So if you wanted to start adding maybe individual link tracks or a metal barrel or something, then it might be worth getting a kit that's already got it in the box. Because you'll tend to find that this will fit, you, like you won't get any fit problems because of this because it's actually all designed by the set of the kit manufacturer, so it's going to fit quite well. And um, it's a lot cheaper way to do it as well, like I said, around £30. Um, some of the Hobby Boss uh, King Tigers, for instance, actually come with Zimmeret in there as well, which is another thing we'll get on when you start looking at German heavies. Zimmeret starts creeping in, and then that, that gives its own problems. So you've got to think about that. So hopefully that covers kit selection. I think if you're really at the basics, you want to be sticking to Tamiya, and you want to get some of the cheap Tamiya kits that you can find straight off to practice your skills on, find out about paints and all of that sort of thing. And if you're looking to spend a lot of money on stuff and get into it, then don't buy kits. Buy some tools, buy a spray booth, buy an airbrush, a compressor, go down that route. 
build those skills, move down that way, as opposed to getting a massive stash and still thinking about maybe brush painting or not really knowing how to build the kit or making sure everything's got, you know, in here you've got metal tracks and all the rest of it, but you know, you may not have the actual skills to put the thing together in the first place. I would strongly suggest you hone the skills of plastic modeling, not worrying so much about accuracy in the sense of uh, extra detailed parts. Now, we could paint these pink there's nothing wrong with that but it does kind of stunt it a little bit is to progress into getting more accurate so what I'll be doing in this series is trying to make an accurate representation of a model but we may have some of the finer details missing so you know we're going to deal with the the kit tracks we're just going to use them they may not be perfectly correct but we'll do as good as we can to make them look good because it's not it's not about getting lost in the project it's about building the model getting through to the end and using some modern techniques on these kits to try and bring them up to the next level. Then as we go further down we can try and think right okay we will add in a metal barrel or we will add some metal tracks or we will do this that and everything else and that all comes at a later date. So that covers kit selection, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know any um, information in the comments below if you're struggling with any of that and you know we can we can talk for it or I can bring it up in the next video. And now I think it's worth, as part of this video, looking at some of the tools you'll need as well. So as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, for this series I am going to be using an airbrush. Now, um, not everyone's going to have an airbrush when they start, but I would, th there are ways to, to do brush painting and get it to look good, uh, but I would really quite strongly suggest that we move towards propelling the paint one way or another. Uh, so whether that is with using an airbrush, I think you need to move towards getting an airbrush at some point because you're just not going to be able to, to to get the techniques as easy as you could with an airbrush if you try and brush paint it. Uh, but you can use uh, aerosols. So Tamiya do many aerosols, Humbrol do aerosols as well so you can spray it on a, with a can in the garden, outside, whatever, where it's very well ventilated and at least that will give you your base coat. And for that we're going to start off with the first couple of kits where it's an overall one colour scheme. Obviously when we start bringing in the um, camouflage the only way you're going to get around it is by using a airbrush. So we've got to bear that in mind so we're not going to be covering paint so much. Um, we're just going to have to think about moving towards airbrushing. There's no real way around it and in this day and age on eBay you, you know you can get a, an airbrush and compressor set to start off with uh, very good prices so it might be worth checking that out and having a look. So as far as tools are concerned firstly I think as I was saying as well I'm going to base most of this on stuff that's readily available so I think we need a craft knife. Now whether you're talking about a Swan Morton scalpel or an X-Acto blade whatever it is it just needs a sharp blade as long as the blade is sharp kept sharp and uh, you're continually renewing the blade sort of checking it I suppose every couple of weeks and I would imagine replacing it every month it's all depending on what you're using it for so that's the first thing relatively inexpensive I've only just picked this one up actually there's about six seven pounds from Hobbycraft uh, and with that if you're gonna go exacto route well then you know get your exacto blades I think number 11 is that what this is yeah, the number 11 blade, this one is one of my most useful, that one at an angle. So we've got the craft knife and new blades. You will need a good set of tweezers. Now these here are the Mr Hobby ones which are about a tenner but they're an upgrade from some very cheap old jewellery ones that I was using for years, so fine point tweezer. So whatever it is, um, get yourself a good pair of tweezers, the best you can afford really, but some of the cheap jewellery ones will, will sort you out for the first six months. Uh, washi tape. Now this is uh, comes from the pound shop we get this or also Ikea as well. comes in a plastic tube like this all kinds of uh, funny little colours and it's uh, it's basically craft tape that is low tack for taping on paper and it's very useful for filling in around the masking. It's not got a very good sharp edge but it's it's very low tack so it's, it's never going to cause you much trouble. If you ever need to mask something or tape something down it's a cheap and inexpensive way of masking. 
If you want to go the next level, then you could get some Tamiya tape as well. Again, this is readily available. This is a very good sharp edge. It cuts very nicely and it's very good. So you can take those two together. Whereas this, this one's about four pounds. That stack's about a pound. So you know, very inexpensive as well. More inexpensive tools is cotton buds and cocktail sticks. You should always have those because they are invaluable going forward. So again, we're really looking I could really get this together for around a tenner so far, so we're not talking about too much expense yet. A pack of paint brushes. Now, again, I would suggest getting one of the sets. Uh, they usually come as a sort of pack of three or four. Uh, whichever, you know, cheap brushes. They're reasonably good. I wouldn't pay a pound for a pack of three or four. I'd try and pay, you know, maybe two, three, four pounds for, for the pack. Um, and uh, a nice wide brush, a thin brush, and if you can get one, where is it? Oh, this also came in the pack, did it? Yeah, there. I've gone for the wider brushes, but you might want to get one with a fine point as well. Something like, like this one here. What's this? This is a, a 10-0 liner. Uh, there you go. I get all of these from Hobbycraft as well. So again, that's probably about seven, eight pounds on brushes, and they will uh, last you for you know nearly an entire year, I would imagine. So that starts off with the basic tools for actually constructing the model. I think I would add in some wire cutters as well for nipping off. So let's get, let's get it down to single things. I'm getting carried away here. So we've got wire cutters, we've got the tweezers, we've got a craft knife, masking tape, cotton buds, cocktail sticks, and some brushes. Next up, we're going to need some glues. Now, I would say you just need whatever super glue you can get hold of. Uh, I use this one at the minute, uh, which you could try and get you know, moved to, but you're not going to pick this up in, in many hobby shops. I got this from a railway shop, so it's a bit more specialist. You need to get this from an actual model shop or something. Uh, but that's the Expo High Quality Super Glue. It's just a fast super glue. And then the uh, plastic cement, I would only advise this. Uh, if you can only get one, that's fine, whichever one of the two. But if you can get both, you've got Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and then you've got Tamiya Extra Thin Cement Quick Setting. I call this, this they're both green, but I call this yellow and this green. So that's the yellow top, this is the green top. Uh, and then that's how I keep uh, going. So if, you, if you've got something where you want to spend a bit of time, so you're getting a, the top of a hole mounted to the bottom of a chassis, for instance, uh, and you're going to leave it overnight, then tape it down and use this one, the slower setting one, or for smaller things where you want a bit of uh, manoeuvring. And if you're using stuff just through the build throughout the session, then the uh, quick setting is very good. But either will do both jobs. It's not a problem. You don't need to. It's more of a luxury. They're about a fiver each, those bottles. And that pretty much will get us there, although I'm missing one thing. Now, this is where it, I didn't know how to go about this. I think what we'll do is start off with the basics with what usually would happen, and that would be some files. Because this is what you'll get. You, you know, you're going you're gonna to see this. It's going to be varying metal files of all kinds of different shapes and sizes. So I would get some sort of metal modeling needle file. Now, I don't use these very much. Uh, I've moved on to sanding sticks. But I think as far as actually starting off, these are like sandpaper sticks. Uh, you could use some very fine sandpaper and you could just tear bits off and use that or these needle files. So you'd have to make up your own decision. If you're looking to um, not spend too much money to, to kick off with, then I would just get some very fine sandpaper from any kind of DIY store uh, and that would be fine. You know, you'd, you, you wouldn't use that those sheets up well, they'd last forever. Uh, but failing that, if you wanted to go down the modelling route, then you could get some needle files, and they usually come in a pack like this. What, what have I got on there? 2.95. Well, these must be useless. <laughs> but there you go. That just shows you that they're relatively inexpensive uh, to have the needle files. And that there is enough for you to build any type of model, if I'm honest. Uh, it would be absolutely plenty. You've got everything you need there. You can glue the plastic. You can glue the non-plastics, we can cut and um, clear mould seams, we can cut from the sprue, we've got tweezers for fine points, and then when we get into weathering we've got all the brushes, the cocktail sticks and the cotton buds. Now one last thing I think we would get is, I, no, personally, I, you won't see this in many uh, beginner uh, videos, but I think it would be a mistake not to have this, is low odour thinners 
So that's oil thinners, uh, mineral spirits basically, but I would use low odour thinners. So this is Dela and Rowney uh, for, for oil paints, and I would use true oil. So I would grab a couple of colours. What have I got here? Uh, we've got white. Now you could do this a number of ways. You could pick up a, a handful of colours. So I've got Payne's Grey, Raw Umber and Titanium White. Or you could buy a cheap set like this where you get sort of 15, 16 colours of all kinds of different colours. It's very cheap oil paint. It would be fine for starting off. Uh, so either or depends, you know, like with the one set will probably be about a fiver, whereas one of these tubes might be four pounds. I mean, I've had this tube about four years. There's still plenty in there for hopefully another four years. So that's one way to go around it. But I would get your low odour thinners that go with the oil paints, and that's not water-soluble oil paints. This is true oils so it's the i've got the winton oil color range here that's what i'm using by windsor and newton why we're doing that will become clear as we get through the build but i think it's very important for you to have those because you can do all your weathering with that and um, that's dust effects uh, panel line washes everything and that's one of the main things that holds basic builds back i think is um the lack of weathering or the misunderstanding of weathering or perhaps even the the wrong application when it comes to weathering there is also another perfect tool that we can add to that on the weathering side and there's two sets of these uh, you can get pastels so these are the coloured pastels uh, I expect for the more in, um, the more useful set which I don't seem to have to hand unfortunately are the black and white ones so there's one in the monotone range which is same amount of pastels but it's white to black and just greys in the middle but uh, again relatively inexpensive a couple of quid and you can see what I've used there I've only really hacked into the white uh, the sort of yellow ochre and this red brown uh, and what you do is you you use your knife and you scrape down the corner as I've done here to get a bit of paste grind it up and then you can use it as a pigment very good very useful and they will last and then you know an entire lifetime so that there I'm thinking that with the model kit we're saying we're doing this one which is about a tenner and the rest of it I think we could probably get there for around 40 pounds something like that and then you're all in uh, you only need to worry about the price of the uh, the actual kits as you go forward. Now, I would say, like you know, it, it, there's a there's an unknown quantity when we get to actually buying a airbrush and compressor or Tamiya rattle cans. But I think, yeah, that's within reason. I think that should be one of your your first purchases, along with a respirator or a spray booth, and then you're ready to go. And I think it's worth just to give some honourable mentions. I don't think these are essential, but. You could add in, if you wanted to, some drills. So this is a micro drill set with uh, the the large shank so that you can actually grab hold of it. So it's, it's very useful. So you've got quite a small drill bit size, but a large uh, shank so you can hold it and twist drill. Very useful for opening up gun barrels and that sort of thing, um, adding extra bits. Uh, you could also have uh, scissors if you wanted to. Um, a metal ruler as well can be quite useful. Scissors, I mean, I just you could use your hobby knife, but I find them quite useful for cutting out around decals, for instance. Uh, this is extremely good for actually cutting around carrier film on decals, so a metal ruler. It's not a bad thing to have uh, to hand. It's a very useful thing. Uh, there are a few other small actual modeling products you could get get some of the setting solutions uh for for decals so this is a, like a decal glue and this melts the decal into actual uh recesses and raised parts uh, they're not essential that you know the decal will go on with just using water but it, it's something that you could potentially add in because you're going to want it at a later date and we're also going to be using um uh, some paints as well, uh, Tamiya paints, uh, but they're more specific to the actual model, so we won't get that into them now. You, you usually build the model and then buy the paint as you're starting to build it. Sanding sticks. So, the thing with sanding sticks is, I mean, once you begin, you, you never stop, really. You always have uh, plenty. So I've got a whole range of these, and these are more or less, uh, they're, they're rigid sticks with sandpaper glued to them, for want of a better term so you've got this rigid stick um, and a good 
nice smooth sanding stick on uh, sandpaper glued to it on top. Now I use the Flory sanders, so that's florymodels.co.uk. I use these as skinny sticks. This is the two-way green, as he calls them there. Uh, and then I use for finishing um, the Infini sanding sticks, which is like a sponge. Uh, I've had that one for years. They, they come in packs of two, and I, I've never opened this one. It must be three years now. And that's a spongy... Um, finishing stick which is absolutely brilliant now I don't actually find that I use these very much on armor these are more for like fuse large spines where you want to um, smooth out a join that sort of thing there's no real large areas on, um, on on armor that needs smoothing out but regardless of that if you need to get rid of mold lines and stuff that is very nice for finishing off and polishing as you can see you know once you start these are all my unused uh, sanders, there's all kinds of things. They come in a bit of a wider, um, the, the floory ones that is, they come a bit wider, a bit more rigid. So again, that, these are honourable mentions. Like I said, if you felt like splashing out, you could add these in. You're not going to find them in um, many hobby stores, you're going to have to buy them online, but they are quite useful and might be something worth thinking about. But, you know, you can build a, a model with sandpaper. It's not a problem. You don't have to get all of this. The decals will attach without the setting solution. You, know, you could drill the hole with the end of a knife or just leave it if you don't want to open a gun barrel. None of it's essential. So these are tools that we start to bring in into the builds as we go forward. The idea of this series very much at the beginning is to get you started with the most basic stuff. So hopefully that's been um, of use. And in the next video, we're going to start actually building a model. And for that, we've got the Tamiya Panzer Kampfwagen 2 Orfs FG in 135th scale. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the channel. Uh, this is now on a playlist, so save the playlist if you want to carry on and uh, see the rest of the videos. And if you haven't already, to stay tuned to the channel, hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you in the next video.